All right, so uh, my name is Carrie Coxwell. I am a software developer and teacher for a company called Block in San Francisco. And uh, we're gonna talk about mental illness in tech and my experiences with that. So uh, this can be a little bit heavy, so you'll see some pictures of my animals uh, just to kind of balance things out. <laughs> so if you need like the next four and a half minutes for a quick power nap, no judgment, just go home and watch Netflix. Uh, Maria Bamford's special, special, special. She's way funnier than me and she talks about mental illness too, so. Uh, all right, let's jump into some numbers. So one in five people in any given year experience a mental illness, which means that if you are not someone who experiences it, you probably know someone who does. Um, that's, that's a lot of people. Um, I'm actually one of them. I have more than my fair share in melange. Um, I have bipolar disorder, um, generalized anxiety disorder, and OCD, which is a friggin' blast. Um, <laughs> recommend it. So, um, so I've dealt with these symptoms for, for you know, before I even know, knew that these diseases had names, and uh, because I felt so much shame about it, um, I didn't get properly diagnosed until I was 30, and I'm now 33, so it's been three good years, you guys. Uh, so there's an organization called Open Sourcing Mental Illness, and they have done a survey of the tech community, and they found that only 30% of people think that their employers take mental illness as seriously as physical illness. Um, when asked if their employer had ever formally discussed mental health, only 20% said yes, which means that 80% of respondents have no idea what their employer provides mental health wise. So this has actually borne out in my own career. I don't find these numbers uh, surprising. I find them unfortunate, but you know, not a single place that I've ever worked for has ever discussed uh, mental illness or mental health in an official capacity. So let's broaden the picture a bit. Um, participants were asked whether they thought that disclosing a uh, physical illness would uh, you know, impact them negatively in their career. 72% of people said no, it would not affect them negatively. Um, but when asked about mental illness, only 37% of people said that it would not affect them negatively. Um, so this doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, I've, I've known developers who were fired after disclosing. So I've actually experienced something similar. Um, I was going through a really tough time personally. I was having panic attacks every day. And I knew that I really needed to take like a mental health day from work. And uh, that's my cat, for real. Um, so I, I did, I took a mental health day and my boss told me uh, the next day, you know, it's really not fair that you're sitting at home. Uh, we'd all like to take a day off, but we're all in here uh, busting our asses. So, you know, try not to do that again. That was, that was super cool. So. You know, IT is one of those fields that it really attracts people who uh, are very detail-oriented detail and perfectionistic and uh, don't like to give up on a problem until they've solved it. Um, but it's important to realize that, like, developers are not robots, right? We are people with emotions and strings and frailties. Um, not a lot of people know this. This is the fun part. So not a lot of people know this, but I was almost hospitalized back in July. and. Um, you know, nothing really bad happened externally in my life. There were no external triggers. It was just like bad brain weather. Um, the winds kind of shifted and after a while I realized like, hey, I'm thinking about suicide like every second of every day, which not, it's not great, you guys. Just, that's my expert opinion. <laughs> so, um, you know, our society doesn't really value mental health as it should, so I wasn't able to take care of myself. Um, you know, <laughs> that, was, that was me. <laughs> So, um, you know, basically I, I just had to keep working. I couldn't take time off of work and all I could do is do my best to keep my insurance, you know, get through work and, uh, you know, work with my psychiatrist to see what we could do. Um, I ended up not being hospitalized because I lied to my psychiatrist when she asked me if I had a plan because I did not want to face the stigma of hospitalization and that seems crazy to me right now. So you might be wondering, cool story, bro, like what can I do? So here are a couple things. Learn mental health first aid. Get your phone out to take a picture of this next slide because there will be URLs where you can learn more about this. Um, you can uh, question your own you know, biases about mental illness. You can share your challenges and you can, uh, you know, if, you, if you do have mental illness, if you're suffering right now, fuck the stigma and go get help. 
Um, so here are the resources. All of these are national with the exception of Church Health, of course, which is local, and they actually do mental health first aid training from time to time. Uh, up at the top, these are the wonderful people who have either you know, helped me personally or inspired me from afar. And you can contact me. My name is Carrie Coxwell. You can find me on Twitter.